I have been on 311 different roller coasters that have inverted me and experienced 1,175 different inversions across the globe. Some inversions are fast and forceful, piling on the positive G's. Others are slow and graceful, instead granting hang time. Then a few elite ones manage to combine elements of both while also incorporating top-notch visuals. In this video, I will rank my top 50 favorite inversions worldwide. Before starting the list, I want to note that I have a preference for airtime and hang time over positive G's, so you'll see a lot of inversions on this list that get you out of your seat. I also want to note that I will be pooling inversions from the same manufacturer and similar elements from different manufacturers, otherwise you would see a bazillion similarly great zero G rolls on this list. Before starting the list, I want to give some honorable mentions to these classic inversions. The vertical loops on old school B&M inverts, Schwarzkopf loopers, and arrow loopers all pull great forces and cause me to gray out on occasion. The corkscrews on old school B&M loopers are super snappy too and I love them. Then there are three additional specific inversions that are honorable mentions as well. One, the flip at the bottom of the Aero SNS 4D coasters. I counted this element on my first drop list because the inversion only consists of a flip and not the rest of the drop. Second, I do not count the Raven turn on the Aero SNS 4D coasters if you don't actually invert as a rider. The element is incredible though. Third, the corkscrew on Disneyland Paris's Hyperspace Mountain is really cool as you invert around a projection of TIE fighters fighting. It looks amazing, but the inversion isn't forceful so it didn't make the list. Number 50, the inverted lift hills on the Mauer Sony Sky Loops. These are a freaky way to start a coaster. Hanging upside down 15 stories in the air is a rare opportunity. You get some incredible hang time while taking in the inverted bird's eye view. Number 49, the vertical loops on Texas Tornado at Wonderland and Desert Storm at Castles and Coasters. Both these Hopkins loopers have super forceful vertical loops. These loops try and force your upper body into your lap, and without the over-the-shoulder restraint, it feels possible. Number 48, the Max Dive Loop on Max Force at Six Flags Great America. This SNS launch coaster ends with this double inversion. You get a weak pop of upside down airtime entering the element. You then transition into hang time as you start leveling off and then transition into a dive loop into the brake run. Number 47, the dive loop on Goliath at Six Flags Great America. This is a unique inversion for RMC. It starts with some hang time. You then plunge to the ground, building up good positive G's. And that descent takes place in a massive support structure teeming with wooden head choppers. Number 46, the Heartline Roll on Max Force at Six Flags Great America. Advertised as the world's fastest inversion, the train zips through this low to the ground high speed roll. It's too fast to cause hang time, but it's very snappy and offers some really nice laterals. Number 45, the Corkscrew and Leck Coaster Legendia. This is a fast and funky corkscrew that takes place through the coaster station. It starts as half a heartline roll before finishing like a corkscrew. You have a brief near miss with the station, a whole lot of whip, plus some laterals. Number 44, the wing over drops on B&M wing coasters and also dynamite at Fry's Eye Park Plon. These diverse drops start with a super slow twist giving some great hang time and then you dive towards the ground, building up positive G's in the valley. I love how this element offers a mix of float and force. Number 43, slow barrel rolls. This covers everything from Jojo rolls at the start of a ride to barrel rolls mid-ride. These inversions are taken extremely slowly and produce copious amounts of hang time. I particularly love when you have just lap bars and you feel your entire upper body dangling. Examples include the Jojo rolls in rides like Hydra the Revenge at Dorney Park, the barrel rolls before the launches on Gerslauer coasters, barrel rolls in SNSL Locos, and Gerslauer Eurofighters, the Intamin Heartline rolls in rides like Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa, the Lagoon roll in Cannibal at Lagoon, and the double roll on Star Trek Operation Enterprise at Movie Park Germany. Number 42, the second Immelman on Sandy's Blasting Bronco and Nickelodeon Universe. 
This coaster features three Immelmans, but the second is the most intense. It has the most abrupt transition out of it, so you get whipped towards the ground. It's possible to even get some airtime on this element, and is super disorienting on the backwards lap. Number 41, the Immelman on Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. The first inversion on this Intamin launch coaster rides distinctly different whether you're in the front or back car. The front gets incredible hang time, and you lean forwards during the descent. Those in the back get an ejector pop on the descent, and the pullout has minimal clearance as you zoom through the rocks. Number 40, the turnaround on Thunderbolt at Luna Park. This Samperla coaster's turnaround is this weirdly profiled dive loop. It starts with a quick flip that gives an inverted pop of airtime, then you forcefully dive towards the ground, and the G's try to force your head into your lap. It is a little bit shaky, but I like the quick switch from negative to positive forces. Number 39, slow vertical loops. The super slow vertical loops on coasters like Full Throttle at Six Flags Magic Mountain and the Mach Multi-Launch coasters are incredible. Being suspended high above the ground with just a lap bar as you fall out of your seat is freaky. I love hang time like that. And I'm also including the finished loops on the Gerslauer Infinity coasters because they feel very similar. Number 38, Scorpion Tail on Cobra Connyland. Unlike most coasters that use a spike to reverse directions, Cobra instead stalls out on this inverted piece of track. It really feels like you'll continue over the edge to your death, but instead you just get 5 to 6 seconds of sustained hang time. Number 37, the vertical loop on Cobra Connyland. This super circular vertical loop provides two distinctly different sensations whether you're going forwards or backwards. Going forwards, you rip through a loop and get some very strong positive Gs. Going backwards, you have much less speed and you instead get great hang time like the previously mentioned vertical loops. Number 36, the vertical loops on Dueling Dragons at Islands of Adventure. Both sides of this invert featured snappy and forceful loops, but the reason these elements make the list is the incredible near miss when it dueled careening towards the other train only to pull up and invert at the last second mere feet from the other train was breathtaking. Number 35, Barrel Roll Drops on RMCs. These are unique starts to coasters. While I prefer traditional first drops, beginning the ride with sustained hang time while you also build up speed is a neat visual and sensation. Number 34, the Demonic Knot on Flug der Daemonen at Heidi Park. This double inversion is comprised of an inclined dive loop, followed by an inclined Immelman. The banking is funky, but the elements feel like back-to-back zero-g rolls. And like all the zero-g rolls on B&M wing coasters, these elements are very floaty. Number 33, the corkscrew and thunderbolt at Luna Park. This super fast inversion feels like a demented zero-g roll. You get some forceful hang time, while also getting laterals as the element jerks you to the side. I just wish this ride had better lap bars to experience this element. Number 32, Schwarzkopf Double Loops. The circular Schwarzkopf loops already pile on the positive Gs, but it's extra intense when you have two in a row. I almost always gray out in the second one from the cumulative buildup of positive Gs. The most forceful of the bunch can be found on Shockwave at Six Flags Over Texas, Mindbender at Galaxyland in Canada, and Chimera at Love Faria de Chapel Chepic. Number 31, the Reverse Sidewinder on Lek Coaster Legendia. This Facoma Multi Looper's first inversion is one of the strongest gray out moments of any ride. The G's from the first drop's pullout are sustained all the way through this element. I had no vision coming out of this inversion. Number 30, the Inline Twists on Wing Coasters. These drawn out rolls deliver incredible hang time. The B&M models usually have an incredible near miss with thematic elements, with one of the best examples being the keyhole on X-Flight at Six Flags Great America. But I also want to highlight the inline twist in Furious Baco at Port Aventura for giving similar hang time as well. Number 29, the half stall, or whatever you call that first inversion on Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. The first inversion on the original RMC Wood Coaster delivers sideways floater airtime, reminiscent of a stall. 
and then you also get a really sharp snap out of the element too. And you blaze through it. Number 28, the Cobra Roll and Alpengeist at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This double inversion delivers leg numbing positive G's both into and out of the element. And then at the top, you get wicked snaps on the half corkscrews. The abruptness can cause some head banging, but the element is otherwise flawless. Number 27, Zero G Rolls on Mach Extreme Spinning Coasters. These Zero G Rolls offer some float while also being super disorienting with the spin. In some ways, they feel like a floaty backflip depending on the orientation at which you take them. Number 26, Zero G Rolls on Old School B&M Loopers. They were super snappy as the world abruptly rotated 360 degrees around you. You'd sometimes get a pinch of hang time in laterals as well, but they are most proficient in the whip department. The ones on the inverts are great, but my favorites are the ones on Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa, Dragon Con at Port Aventura, and the Incredible Hulk Coaster at Islands of Adventure. Number 25, Zero G Rolls with Lap Bars. These graceful elements never fail to offer great hang time. It feels like inverted airtime with those lap bars. Some of the best examples are Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee and the ones on RMC coasters because of the near misses with the supports. But I also love the one Lost Gravity at Wallaby Holland because it occurs over a synchronized geyser. Number 24, the barrel roll on Taiga at Linen Maki and Untamed at Wallaby Holland. These 360 degree rolls occur towards the end of both rides. You are whipped through the element getting forceful hang time, which is made even better by the lap bar only trains. Number 23, the quadruple barrel rolls on Intamin 10 inversion coasters. This sequence of inversion starts with some nice whip, and then you keep getting lifted out of your seat again and again and again as you slowly spiral through the four consecutive inversions. Number 22, the second loop on Desert Storm at Castles and Coasters. This inversion has the very strong positive G's of the aforementioned Hopkins loops, but the exit twists sideways and induces violent laterals. With lap bars, the abrupt motion with the force is quite the thrill. Number 21, the vertical loops on Vacoma Flying Dutchman. This inversion delivers crushing positive G's entering and exiting the element and the loop is sized such that you slow down at the top and get a pinch of hang time. The rapid application, removal, and reapplication of positive G's is quite dizzying. Number 20, the inverted top hat and helix at Lisaburg. This inversion occurs immediately after the second launch, and it is helix's tallest point. You get fantastic hang time at the apex, and it's made even more special by the spectacular view of Gothenburg from atop the hill at that odd angle. Number 19, the underground heartline roll on Tornado at Sark and Niemi. This intimate inverts features a drawn out heartline roll. The hang time is incredible. And you also have one of the craziest near misses ever as you charge through an underground tunnel. There's minimal clearance to begin with and the roll also takes place above the load platform. It is a really unique visual. Number 18, the dive loops on Gerstlauer Infinity Coasters. These inversions offer wicked laterals as you abruptly rotate 180 degrees and then dive downwards. And the compact ascent delivers super strong positive G's as well. The element doesn't offer much in terms of hang time, but the laterals and positives more than compensate. Number 17, the barrel rolls on I speed at Mirabellandia. These two inversions may be the closest we'll ever see to Maverick's removed barrel roll you violently rocket through this 360 degree roll. The elements have so much whip that the centrifugal forces lift you out of your seat. Just watch your neck because eye speed has hard over the shoulder restraints. Number 16, fly to lie elements on B&M flyers. This inversion starts with half of a downwards barrel roll and it feels like a shorter version of the RMC barrel roll drop. The pullout then piles on very strong positive G's similar to a pretzel loop and you have no clue where you're going next because you're on your back going backwards. Number 15, Pretzel Loops on B&M Flyers. These may be the best inversions in the world for positive G's. The dive towards the ground is intimidating as you rapidly build up insane positive G's. 
The forces are overwhelming and they feel like they'll shove you through the train. It may be over an instant, but it always leaves me shell-shocked. Number 14, the Zero-G stalls on Steel Curtain at Kennywood and Intamin Multi-Launch Coasters. Both these stalls are fast and relatively low to the ground. They offer forceful hang time, and the transitions into and out of the element shake you side to side with some laterals. This combination of forces with just a lap bar is fantastic. Number 13, the Batwing on B&M Inverts. Both Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa and Afterburner Carowinds feature this incredibly forceful double inversion. You are ferociously whipped through each inversion and are treated to crushing positive Gs in the underground tunnels. The snap on this element is insane. Number 12, the Zero G Winder on Taiga at Lin Maki. This Intamin launch coaster blasts you into this super slow inversion that gives incredible hang time. At the same time, you also get an amazing view looking down a hill, and then you drop down that very hill into the rest of the ride. Number 11, the JoJo Roll on Ride to Happiness at Plopsa Land Japan. This may be one of the slowest inversions in the world, and that works to its advantage. You get nearly 5 seconds of sustained hang time as you perform this glacial barrel roll out of the station. And since this is an extreme spinning coaster, you will also spin slowly. It feels like time is standing still while you perform this wacky element upside down. Number 10, the Dive Loop and Velocicoaster Islands of Adventure, the original RMC Raptors, and Hyperion at Energylandia. These dive loops start with half a camelback, which launches riders out of their seat. And before you can even return to your seat, you get wild laterals as you twist 180 degrees down to the ground. The way this element launches you out of your seat and then throws you to the side is amazing. Number 9, the inverted top hat on Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at both Six Flags St. Louis and Six Flags Over Texas. This inversion does a little bit of everything. You get powerful positive G's entering and exiting the element. On the twisted ascent and descent, you get some laterals. You then somehow get both a pop of upside down airtime plus positive G's at the apex of the inversion simultaneously. It makes no sense, but your body is taken for a wild ride, and you get to experience this element twice, both forwards and backwards. Number 8, the inline twist on Blue Fire at Europa Park and all of its clones. This mock coaster's final inversion has a lot of similarities to the Mosasaurus roll. This quick roll is extremely whippy, so much so that it forcefully lifts riders out of their seat while also throwing their body to the side. The combination of extreme laterals and hang time with just a lap bar is breathtaking. Number 7, Zero-G Stalls on RMCs. While other companies have tried to imitate the RMC Zero-G Stall, the original is still the best. These elements hold you upside down longer, and it feels like an inverted floater airtime hill. My favorite is the one on Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom because of the profiling and the incredible head chopper underneath you. But the ones in Goliath at Six Flags Great America, Wildfire at Colmarden, and Zadra at Energylandia are breathtaking as well due to their size. Number 6 the double barrel roll finale on Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. The original RMC Wood Coasters finale is this insane uphill barrel roll. The first roll has some whip while you're also lifted out of your seat. You then remain out of your seat as you complete the second roll towards the brake run, and the second one takes forever so you're out of your seat for a very long time. Number 5, the double inverting stall on Untamed at Wallaby Holland. This inversion feels like a zero-g stall and barrel roll drop back to back. The stall lifts you from your seat, and then you hang sideways in a brief intermission. You then invert again on the descent, remaining out of your seat. You get roughly 4 seconds of sustained hang time plus head choppers on this very disorienting inversion. Number 4, the flying snake dive on Storm Runner at Hershey Park. This inversion is exceptional, and I'm looking at it from the full package. It does a little bit of everything. It starts with a great pop of ejector airtime as you rise into the element. Right as you return to your seat, you rapidly snap through a heartline roll, getting some good hang time. 
then you continue into a dive loop with a 90 degree twist on the descent. The second inversion is too rapid to offer hang time, but the abrupt descent causes very strong laterals and you lose all sense of direction. Number 3. The flipping inversions on Arrow or SNS 40 coasters. Anytime you flip while either navigating a camelback or a zero G roll, you get great sustained floater airtime while also losing all sense of direction. It feels like your average zero G roll, but on Barry Bonds steroids. Then the Raven turn in the SNS versions includes a flip over the top, which feels completely unhinged because you get even more sustained airtime on that large descent. And because there are no restraints for your lower body, you raise a frighteningly high amount out of your seat. Number 2. The Mosasaurus Roll on Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure This is an insane barrel roll from Intamin. The ride tries to rip you from the train in every direction, as it's hard to tell if you're getting ejector airtime or insane laterals. You may be getting both simultaneously. And this element is also positioned mere feet above the water for one of the best visuals of any inversion. And coming in at number 1 is the Flying Snake Dive on Ride to Happiness at Plopsaland Japan. This inversion on this mock extreme spinning coaster is insane. The ascent into the element launches you out of your seat, and then you stay levitated out of your seat for the next two inversions. You get some incredible hang time in the initial inline twist, and then the half twist on the dive loop. You do not return to your seat in between any of these elements, and you're spinning like a top two. So the 90 degree twist in the dive loop is incredibly disorienting, even more so than the one on Storm Runner. This element is both forceful and mind-bending. Those are the 50 best inversions I have ever experienced. What are your favorite inversions or thoughts on any of the ones I mentioned? Let me know if there's any you think I missed down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.